Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the REC Podcast, brought to you by the REC Toycast. I'm your host, Roman Chavez, and with me as always, Eric Icarus. Eric! What's going on, dude? Man, we got guests today. Where? Oh. And you know what? And for the first time, mm-hmm. I think people can really see him. Okay? Are you serious? If you're not checking us out on YouTube, go check us out, REC Podcast. We have the Big Tuna. Welcome. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Jor- Jordan Tunney yeah. to-, to the layperson, <laughs> and we have the David Williams. David Williams to the lead person, <laughs> all right? Um, guys, thank you guys for, for coming on the show. Uh, we wanted to... This is a test. Not, not, not going to lie to you, kids. Uh, we've never shot with four people, and uh, so we're trying to figure this thing out. Um, I definitely can tell you guys I'm not sold on this look, but I don't hate it. So, well, you might see some different things when we do the when we do the four-way next time, all right? Um, we got to start out with some... I mean, weeks in a row, Eric. I mean, it's just, it's now part, it's part of the show. It's gotta be. It's just, it's just all that it is. Um, Well, you know, let's, let's backtrack. You can follow us on Instagram <laughs> at REC Podcast. You can follow myself at Roman REC Podcast. You can follow the bomb dude. Gulag underscore J underscore Wilden. There we go. There we have it. I just, I just want to get to the bad news. Yeah. I just want to get past it. Yet another chapter of old Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Carl Reiner has passed away yep. um, at 98. Uh, I'm not going to front and say that I'm some huge Carl Reiner fan, but um, I, I mean, we all like Oceans. We all like Ocean's Eleven. Uh, Dave brought it to my attention that he was a writer for Dick Van Dyke. Um, I've seen him in, in tons of other things. I feel like I might have seen him in a Herbie movie. I don't know, you know. Uh, but I can tell you that his kind of uh, uh, I loved his uh, shysty character in the Oceans film, the Lyman Zerga thing. Um, I loved seeing him do all of those voices, kind of be that uh, be be the con man, be the uh, yeah. what did they call him? Oh, yeah, the, the grifter. The grifter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love that. And guys, I know it's sacrilege that he's this big comedic. I just it, a different time. It's a, a different time, different time. Not not a huge fan either. Yeah, you know, but I can appreciate the steps it took to get to where we are. With comedy, totally, so, totally. You know, and I mean, I respect 90, it a little bit. Ninety eight years young. That's uh, that's nothing to scoff at. It's nothing. <laughs> yes, to scoff it is. At. <laughs> it's where you stop. Do um, <laughs> you guys familiar with with Carl Reiner in any major facet outside of the Ocean's films? Not not really. I mean, like I knew like he was kind of the the Hollywood royalty. That, sure. You know, like because his son too, right? Yeah, Rob, Rob, Rob Reiner, Reiner, Reiner. Yeah, director, yeah. writer. And, I know him more than Carl. Mm, yeah, cool. all in the family. But it's it's one of those things where it's like when you're 98 years old and you had a career pretty much. I mean, mm-hmm. for like at least 70 years, probably yeah, close to it. Yeah, you're gonna always be something different to different generations yeah, yeah. so like our generation he like we know him from oceans yeah well like my parents generation or so they probably know him like the jerk uh dead the man, man with two brains dead man were um, um yeah uh, all of me like Ooh. you know more like old like the steve martin comedies yeah. you know like he was just in a bunch of them and so um so i don't think it's necessarily you know sacrilege but just goes to show like the uh, staying power yeah you know and we're not we're not big you know like oh we know everything about film we just like film and i think it's interesting to have uh an actor that old that actually can like you can actually have a conversation with three generations even if all you know is the oceans movies you know three oceans movies uh wasn't and, he in the lady one too i don't think he was a lady I think, one i think he was in was he one. Get, don't look at me like yeah. I saw. No, yeah. uh, no, he w- he was supposed to be. I think. Oh, was he? Okay. In, in the end, but instead they brought back um, uh, Ross's dad. What's his name? Oh, oh Elliot Gould. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Eugene, I said Eugene Levy. Yeah, Elliot Gould. <laughs> I always get Eugene Levy and Elliot Gould. I know that they're not the same, <laughs> but they 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 feel like they do a lot of the same stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. I feel like you could. Yeah. You could, uh, you could like he would have been fun as Jim's dad too. Yeah. You sure. know, like, like I could have been into that. Um, so yeah, just another just another one of those chapters in old Hollywood that we've been acknowledging lately, and, and unfortunately, goodbye. You know, pour one out. And it's okay if if people are only recognizing him from the Ocean's movie, right? And if anything, um, you know, the silver lining about all this is that now you can go back and look at his history and go watch some of those old movies that he was a part of mm. and appreciate him in that way. Yeah. So. I, I agree with everything you're saying. It's a it's a tragic loss, but yeah. but with that loss, we can we can go back and, and see uh, how he left his mark. On I'm that. curious. I, I I'm curious on that. It may, maybe we'll put a little few of those movies on, on my list. Um, usually when we have these these four person groups, uh, I, I give you guys uh, uh, you know something to think about. Yeah. But before we hit that. We've talked about uh, we're gonna have a show later on this week about the Green Lantern. Be, be, uh, yeah. uh, be on the lookout for that. Um, and just it's the 80th anniversary of the Green Lantern. 
um, as guys who are always kind of adjacent to the comic book culture. You're always, you know, you'll duck into a comic book store every now and again. Um, you love the movies. Uh, do you guys have a Green Lantern memory for me? Something that, something that you like about the character, something that you don't like that you know? Um, I, I would just love to hear kind of the ancillary. Yeah. I think I think for me, like to be honest, I didn't really start getting into the Green Lantern, like looking at the, the like any of the trades or the comics mm -hmm. or anything, um, until about the movie release or sure. so. Um, and I think what really fascinated me with that um, with that approach to the superhero mythos is the way the power works. It's not just uh, you know, source for tapping into blank magic. Mm -hmm. You know, it's this idea that, like power is drawn. I really like that idea, and I also like the idea of the 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 depth of creativity mm -hmm. with the constructs that are made. You sure. know, and and how different lanterns. Um, uh, if you're more artistic, it looks different than if you're more mechanical. Nice. Like nice. I actually think that's in really incredible. Um, and then uh, you know, mm -hmm. being being very surface level with the Green Lantern mythology, mm -hmm. um, the whole idea of like the the introduction of like the emotions mm -hmm. into the the whole spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, I I remember thinking like um, it just seemed like a much richer mythos than. Uh, we're all from Krypton, so we can all do these things. But if I have this type of kryptonite, it's different. Like I just felt, it felt, it feels like a very um, expanded, deep universe. Yeah, nice, nice. Well, so uh, my first sort of introduction to it was when I was a kid watching the Superman animated, you know, cartoon. Nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the episode that we first saw, it was actually a Kyle, right? Yeah. Um, they and, basically did the Hal Jordan story right, with, with Kyle, Kyle mm -hmm. right? And that's when I was like, oh, this is cool. Who's this, right? And then, um, obviously, Justice League comes around, right? Mm -hmm. You see the other one, right? And th that's 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 the interesting part, right? Where you have um, anyone can be a Green Lantern. Yeah. Right? It's not just one specific person like you know, Bruce Wayne being Batman or Clark Kent being Superman. But you can have multiple Green Lanterns. And, by the way, it's not just a Green Lantern, right? You have the Yellow Lantern, right, as an example. And you can be that. And uh, I, I like I liked sort of those storylines where um, where it's it's not you know, your typical villains, right? It's it's um, it's something where in this in this case where you're a Green Lantern, it's your will. Right? Yeah, your will is powering the ring, right? As long as you're tapping into that. You can do anything, and you can do it at the speed of thought. Yeah, and so, and that's, and I really enjoyed uh, with Red Sun Superman. Yeah, definitely. Where you know, uh, like Le your Lex boy Lex Luthor. Luthor. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, twenty twenty Lex Luthor, right? Um, he'll save America. Anyway, uh, he, you know, he's trying to defeat the Soviet Superman, and he, you know, makes a Green Lantern army because. Mm -hmm. In, the, in that timeline, it, he, the it still it still crash lands in America, yeah. and you know he makes Hal Jordan, and I think even I don't know if this was in the comics or I might be getting it mixed up with the the actual movie. I, I haven't saw. watched the animated one yet, right? But well, I don't want to give any spoilers, but <laughs> <laughs> but I might. Um, there were a, the other the other Green Lanterns were a part of the the squadron mm -hmm. attacking Superman. Yep, and so I thought that was cool, but you know. What can I say? It's he's a great character. I have a I have a statue of him in my office, and along with the rest of the Justice League, and I hope they can actually in the future do justice uh, to the story by doing a good movie as opposed to a not so good movie. And this is not a, this is not an indictment on Ryan Reynolds because I actually no. like him a lot. Yeah. It's just that that story was horrible, and um, I guess all that came of that was a, what, a romance between Blake Lively and um, Hey, but you know, there you, go. you know, you know, so it's not all lost. I remember Taika Waititi's in it for some reason. That's true. Um, did you, uh, have you guys heard about any of those rumors about Ryan Reynolds uh, possibly Wait. joining the Snyder Cut in some form? <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. I remember hearing, I remember hearing talk about like, uh, you know, was did, did um, um, Army Hammer film a cameo as yeah. Hal Jordan, you know, and all mm -hmm. these different things. And it's just like, just like, you know, with anything else when we talk, you know, it's the weekly Snyder Cut update. Yeah. Yes. You know, it's yes. with, with any of those things. Um, I think the only the only way that um, anybody is introduced is if Zach feels like he would have. I yeah. don't think he's going to go back and try to like remix his own movie that didn't get released. Yeah, I think he's going to. I think he's working to complete the film and the vision he had. Um, and I don't know. I mean, but 
the movie already has the Green Lantern little wink and nod at the beginning. Yeah, you know, or not Which the beginning, fantastic. but the, the flashback. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you see the 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 fight with. Uh, um, with Steppenwolf, which might end up actually being the fight with Darkseid, <laughs> you know, they just, but, uh, it's the, oh my God, it's the exact same it, fight. It's just, it's Darkseid. I, I think it could, I mean, well, even that, even <laughs> that, be so mad. even that, even that image, even yeah, that still yeah. that was released is the same like image when, when, uh, Wonder Woman is talking to Bruce and telling him the story mm-hmm. of what, like literally the shot of like the ships coming mm-hmm. down and everything. So all that is to say, um, I think, uh, I think there can be a good Green Lantern movie. I think the biggest mistake the movie made was they took a phenomenally interesting character and in universe mm-hmm. and gave them an incredibly generic superhero story. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, something with 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 all of that power. Yeah, you know, all that for a drop of blood. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh uh you know he's arguably like between him and batman like it's, it's hard for me to pick who my favorite dc character is in terms of the, the heroes uh so i've just been on this kick for this week the, the 80th anniversary uh green lantern comic came out last week i'm not ready yet i'm ex- anxious to go uh but i was just very curious since you guys are familiar with the character and you guys both had very rich different ideas oh, yeah, than what yeah. we talked about on the show today, sure. so i'm so glad that i asked yeah. so glad that i asked <laughs> um well I have an interesting idea, um, and and just bizarre, and I want to see where we can go with it. I've asked you guys to, uh, we get remakes of, of bad movies. Sometimes we get remakes of good movies, but we rarely get remakes of like great movies or movies that we like. That that you just say, hey, just leave it alone. But if you had to remake a movie, a movie that you like already, it's it's almost perfect. How would you beef it up? Like, what what are the things that you, upon further review, you say? Man, if they just did this, like it would, it would take it from a nine five to a nine to to a, to a ten, you know. Um, and I'm just curious. I have no idea where this type of conversation can go, but I've been kicking it around in my head, and I'd love to hear. I don't know if you if you if you want to start us off, or if you'd hey, like me to do you it. Go? Why don't you kick us off? Um, right I'm gonna stay on brand, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm gonna say uh, Blade. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, even though Blade Trinity, the third one, is not very good, um, there's still, you know, Ryan Reynolds is great in it. Uh, there's still some fun moments to it. But I'm going to kind of stick to, like, like Blades 1 and 2. And I think that, for me, it's it's so close. It's so close to a perfect movie, the first Blade, because it's gritty, it's got all this, and it doesn't even need to be a comic book movie. But I think that there was room in that world to add... Um, the, some of those ancillary street mystic characters, a werewolf by night, sure. a uh, and then maybe even leading into a Moon Knight, which I know we're going to get get a Moon Knight right. character, but it would have been really fun to kind of um, expand in that dark universe, what we what we kind of refer to as the Midnight Suns, right. or just uh, uh, just the kind of the macabre. The the uh, there's another. Um, like with Damien Hailstrom, I guess he's part of the Midnight Suns too. But just kind of those those occult characters. Sure. Uh-huh. I think that in three movies, I mean, it took us three movies to get to a weak, a weak Dracula. Right. There could have been other uh, uh, elements put into it, just adding upon to it. I like the mutant vampire in the second yeah. one. Uh, there's an excellent Blade uh, series where we see Blade hunting vampires, and depending on the region of the world, like the vampires are different. So there are some that hunt at dusk and at dawn, so they can actually handle low levels yeah. of yeah. sunlight. Um, so you were seeing, you know, the Japanese uh, ones are very mystic and they mist a lot. Like they do different things. So you're finding that there are different. I would have liked to have seen more races of vampires in that world. I think it could have been really interesting. It might be more ripe for a TV show, but those are things that I would add to it. Those are things that oh, I would add to it. That's awesome. Um, in terms of. Re, uh, I talked about maybe even recasting a character. God, it, it's going to be hard for even um, um, Marshal Hala Ali. Is he the one that's going to be doing uh, the new Blade? Yeah. Even though he's a two-time Oscar winner? I think, uh, he might be two-time because he got it for yeah. Green Book. And uh, moon, moon, Moonlight. Moonlight, yeah. yeah. Um, so even at a two-time Oscar winner, if you told me, that that they said, hey, last minute we're gonna put Wesley Snipes in. We're just gonna right. re- we'll, we'll, we'll make it work. I would totally be fine. <laughs> like I would totally, <laughs> like it was just perfect casting. Chris Christopherson. Yeah. Um, I was trying to think if there was like a like no that guy like I don't He's care about his, level grizzled. I don't care know. about his country music career. I don't care about any of his other. <laughs> he, he is Whistler. Star, he was in the Star Is Born. <laughs> he was. He the was. Yeah, he was yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Was he in the remake? I didn't see the remake. No. See, that's interesting because that was a a, a, a very well received film. 
the original, yes. and then they remade a good movie, and then they made another good one. But I didn't see <laughs> yeah. either. I, I didn't, didn't see didn't either. See either um, I thought about some recasting, but there was just I think as much as I like Norman Reedus. Somebody else could have played that Scud character. Because oh, um, yeah, Norman Reedus just wasn't good in there. Like, it was pre... I think it was pre-Boondock Saints. Mm-hmm. It might have been right after. Like, right I think after. Boondock Saints right was after. 98, 99. No and I think, way. Yeah. Wow. And I think okay. Blade 2 would have been probably like 2000, 2001, right? Maybe, yeah. Okay. Yeah, pretty wow. close cool, so, yeah. so I, I, I liked the idea of like, okay, Whistler is gone and I need a t- another tech guy. And then I think that they even dropped the ball further with uh, Patton Oswalt. I, he just did. Patton Oswalt does nothing for me. I don't care for Patton Oswalt in any way, shape, or form except for this episode of Dollhouse where it, it's it's epically yeah. sad. I remember you talked about Dude, that. I've never seen the show, Dude. but I remember like you were, yeah, about, you got uh, into What about Ratatouille? Didn't you know that? Right. Yes, but you know, I I literally like recently saw Ratatouille, okay. like in the last couple of years. I've still never seen that. Yeah, I don't. I don't it like it is good. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't like animated. I don't, or I don't want them near my food. I don't like food. <laughs> I don't like food. Movies about food. It's too much. Um. So yeah, th- those are the things that I would have liked to have seen. And I, and and you know, I I definitely stayed in the comic book realm. But I'm I'm anxious to hear what you guys sure. have to say. What, what, or what do you guys think about that? I that mean, it, yeah, I'm down with that. That sounds great. Any of those it's things adding, be interesting adding, to you? I add, add a lot more to a good movie or a good two movies rather. And, and then the Marsha Hala Ali one. Yeah, that's going to be a show or it's going to be a movie. A movie. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. No, I think you're right. Adding more characters uh, because there's so many characters, right? Yeah. All over comics, and it's always fun to have these crossovers. And I, mm-hmm. I, I might be remembering this wrong you guys can correct me if not but there was a spider-man yes. episode where i think it was a secret wars one towards the end mm-hmm. where uh they're, they're trying to spider-man's trying to bring black cat right yeah and before they get there though there's this scene where they're in cat uh I don't know, Transylvania or uh-huh. something, and it's like Morbius? Morbius, Morbius and Blade. Blade and Black Hat are right. hunting. Yeah, yeah. Right. so the reason I bring it up is because I'd be like, okay, yeah, I'd like to see Morbius. Didn't uh, also, didn't the animated series also have when he turns into the, like, man spider? Yeah. yeah. Didn't uh, Punisher and Blade, were mm-hmm. they both? Yeah. yeah. And they're actually trying to help. Yeah, which, they're tr- yeah. Which was great. Yeah. Because those characters, like, especially Punisher, a lot of people don't, don't realize that the Punisher's first appearance is in Spider-Man. Mm. His first appearance in comic right. books is in the Spider-Man book. He's hired to, to hunt Spider-Man, um, very Craven-esque. Yeah. Um, dude, it's so funny that you bring up that episode, and I haven't thought about it. And I haven't watched the, the Spider-Man animated series in years. You should, um, because is it on Disney Plus? It's on it's Disney Plus. Uh, I'm gonna have to watch it. But that, even as a kid, that episode always irritated me. Is because <laughs> Black Cat doesn't have any powers, man. You're on this <laughs> alien planet, and you're gonna bring somebody less powerful than you because you might get lucky on an <laughs> alien planet. That's how it felt, and you know it. <laughs> And remember how, how upset she was? She was right. like, yo, like, we were fighting. Like, I, you pulled me out. Like, I was right. in a vampire fight. <laughs> and I don't know what happened to Blade and Michael. But in that in that show, didn't she, didn't she have the powers of Captain America? Like, uh, like yeah, like water down ones. Right. She, yeah, but again, that's... I don't want that on planet. Bring me Morbius or Blade. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> right. Give me the Punisher. I don't, right. I don't need. I don't need a. I don't need a thief. <laughs> I don't need a thief to fight the Beyonder and Doctor Doom. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. I, oh my god, I'm, I'm I'm way off track. I think you're yeah yeah. I'm with you. Yeah yeah, yeah I'm with yeah. you. No, thank you. I needed Morbius. I've yeah, never been able Morbius. to have that conversation, <laughs> and I've always wanted to. So thank you. Thank I'm you. Glad. I appreciate glad it. I've, oh man, I feel like this, this weight is off my chest. <laughs> we'll talk about the spider wars later. Um, Eric, do you have yes, one for us? I do. Um, this might be kind of a uh, hidden gem of a movie. It's called Black Rain. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Michael Douglas, yes, 1989. Yes. Uh, Ridley Scott directing it. Mm. Um, basically, it's it's a neo noir movie. It uh-huh. takes place, but it takes place in America, then it goes to Japan. Basically, uh, Michael Douglas and Andy Garcia are mm-hmm. extraditing a, 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 a Yakuza boss yeah. back to Japan. Mm-hmm. Gives him the slip, and they have to track him down in Japan. Oh, and it, it's, it is just the way it's shot movie. is amazing, dude. Yeah. Like, I mean, the neon light. It looks like Blade Runner almost yeah. the way it's shot, but a little bit more realistic, I guess. Okay. So they actually filmed in Japan for this movie, and it, it was just really gritty. You could not make that movie now. 
Yeah. Just the way it was, you know, done and shot. Okay. Just, it's a damn good film. It yeah. is, yeah. You should, you should watch it. Yeah, it's I, definitely worth a watch, dude. It's worth talking about that movie for the whole episode. Yes, That's it is. how much I like yes. oh. yeah, it. Yeah, it is, it is up there. You've never seen it? I've never seen You've it. Never seen yeah. it? Dude, I tried to watch it. I ended up getting Purple Rain. <laughs> <laughs> Super... Super confused. Here's a, here's a little bit of trivia. I believe it was Hans Zimmer who did the, the score, score uh-huh. for it. And if you li- if you watch some of the um, uh, the scenes in the movie of Black Rain, it pretty much the song will match up with uh, Batman Begins. Yeah, the beats actually the beats. line up. Yeah, but, the, it, but it's, this is before, this is Han, this is pre Hans Zimmer's uh, Buong face. Yeah, he actually uh, used a lot of synthesizers. Yeah. And it sounds great. The soundtrack's amazing. Does it, does it sync up? With the Wizard of Oz, <laughs> <laughs> you know what we're testing. This. All right, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Um, third lines roar. We'll, we'll I get it think going. this is just you know if I had to, this is like a almost a perfect movie for me. But you know if we're going crazy here, mm-hmm. I think it might have benefited because Ridley Scott directed. Um, maybe that's the reason why the colors pop so much in there. But I think if his brother Tony Scott mm-hmm. had directed this movie, mm-hmm. I think it might have taken it a little bit over oh know? really just because he i think you, the way tony find tony to be a, a better director no okay God, I was gonna no. Say, I was like, but just for this type of movie more of a down down and gritty down and dirty gritty cop, cop drama mm-hmm. i think did, tony uh, would uh, man on fire yeah and, and glass boy scout yeah mm-hmm. uh-huh so i think it <laughs> yeah, 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 that, yeah, you know? I, knew, I knew as soon as he started saying it, i was like ron was gonna be like oh yeah <laughs> I, I like the last boy scout but let's not pretend that's a good movie okay <laughs> it, it's good for what it is yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think Tony Scott taking the reins, it would have added maybe a little more grime to it. Yeah. You know, I don't know about casting. I could, I don't know if I could do any different casting. The so, villain that they get to play him is this amazing um, Japanese actor. I guess he's huge over there. He passed away shortly after the movie wrapped, mm. which is unfortunate. Um, but if I were to have picked a different villain, because he was coming up around the same time, Chow Yun Fat would have been amazing for that role. Interesting. I think he would have been just knocked it out of the park. For that. So you, your 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 take on it is. I, I, I like the soup. I want to have the sous chef make it. Yeah, there you go. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. the perfect way to because put you, that. Yeah. Because you, you like Tony, you think Tony Scott. Just, just, just a little more, add a little more grit to it. Yeah, you know because I mean? Tony Scott is kind of more down, down to earth. Yeah, because you know Ridley's done Alien. Uh, everything. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah so yeah. Yeah, his movie, yeah, his uh, filmography is all over the place. Whereas okay. Tony Scott's is very, he's got a pattern he follows. Oh. He does it well. You know, all his movies are amazing, but I think it, it just 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 being a little crazy. I think it would have benefit with Tony directing. Is there anything, and, and you might know this, is there any type of um, um, a short film or anything like that that that's that's popular where it's like we gave the same script to two different directors or four different directors <sighs> intentionally? Yeah. I'm not I'm not familiar. Uh, I, I mean, that'd be there, interesting. There have been times where like yeah, someone's taken like a like a premise or something, yeah. you know, but I mean, I can't like off the top of my head, I can't think of anything yeah. where it's like, yeah, we're, we're doing our take. Yeah. Uh, you know, I would love to uh, see other that. than justice league. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I mean, that, that's, 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 that's really, that's, that's really what we're talking about. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All, all things lead back to the Snyder cut. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I, and it maybe this is why it's on my head, like yeah. in my head. Like I just, I, I don't know. You, you guys know how I feel. <laughs> so do the listeners. Uh, Big Tuna. Uh, yeah. Um, so my my thought process with this sure. was I wanted to I wanted to think of a movie that I enjoy, um, but like it, it, it it's dated. It wouldn't. I don't know. Um, the Warriors. Oh, dude! Yeah. You, you talk like, about the Warriors all the time. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. Okay. So my my take on it would be. Because uh, obviously the Warriors was modern in the seventies, right? Mm-hmm. But it would be modern now, and um, I like the idea, like the of the gangs and stuff. But yeah. like you know, they give some explanation, like the police of Coney Island have been defunded, and so <laughs> like no, no, like okay, here we go, okay, right? Okay, so okay. so, but here's the thing: the Warriors are uh, people; they love their community. Uh-huh. They love their 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 block, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're all vets. That's why they're warriors. Mm. And there's this whole thing about the gangs and the rival, you know, and this whole idea of like if we escalate against other people, they're just going to call in the national guard, and this whole thing's going to be done. And then they get framed for killing this boss who's trying to kind of keep the peace between everyone and then it becomes a run all night movie like a mm. get back like and really it's funny because you talked about this you know when we you know we're together a few weeks ago uh but i really actually started thinking about this when i watched the movie 21 bridges uh, uh because that's also kind of a run all night movie you got mm. two guys that do a, a they 
go to steal some drugs. They steal from dirty cops. Mm -hmm. So they're on the run. You got a guy chasing that. I really like the idea, like with the Warriors, like the pace is always going. They're never safe until they get back home. And then even then, somebody's waiting for it. So Mm -hmm. that would be kind of my... My take on it. Okay. No, I like that. Yeah. I feel like you've been calling for a Warriors remake as long as I've known you. And I'm surprised that we haven't got one. Like, I, I, I wonder I mean, what... I it's been I, I development heard, hell for years. Yeah, I heard at one point that Rob Zombie was attached yeah, yeah, in yeah, some way, true. but it's like... I'm glad that didn't happen. Yeah. yeah. I don't think... I, I'd much rather see... Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I can't think of a, a director off the top of my head, but Zach I'd much Snyder. rather see... <laughs> Zach, yeah. Honestly, I, I could see it. <laughs> I, uh, I wouldn't... It wouldn't... Uh, not work. <laughs> uh, the gentleman, Guy Ritchie. Guy Ritchie. Guy Ritchie yeah. yeah, I can actually see that. Yeah, there you go. Have you Have you guys seen um, the gentleman? No, yeah, I, I saw it. Dude, how it was awesome wonderful. The gentleman. It was. You gotta watch. Yeah, it. I'll get to it. But I don't know. Uh, you like British comedy, but how are you on? Oh, but you. Oh, uh, you like Guy Ritchie. Never mind. Yeah. You like Guy Ritchie. Yeah. I don't, My wife's I don't know British. So yeah. she'll, she'll translate for me. Yeah. <laughs> Like, what is this uh, about taxing or tea? <laughs> like, <laughs> that doesn't sound right to me. They keep saying "valu." What is this? Um, ah, no, that, that's an awesome idea, and I love that. That's like I said, that's something that you've been kind of craving. Yeah, I, yeah. I feel like it. I feel like it, it could be done poorly, uh, or it could be done really well. And and I and I like the idea of like making it like don't do it based in the seventies. Don't like yeah. like don't do the the original movie. Again, yeah. Make it modern, make it different, like, and that's my whole thing is like when movies try to be what the other one was, they don't, they really never seem to be successful, mm. you know. Yeah. But like oh, that's yeah. that's why, um, you know, I mean, I know it wasn't hugely received by people, but I liked the sequel of Blade Runner because it yeah, moved yeah, the story and the universe forward, yes. but it also it made sense. It was relevant to the universe of the original films. Mm-hmm. So like, so maybe the warriors, maybe the remake is an extension of what happened in the seventies. So like this universe still exists, you know, but things are different with technology, with policing, with all these different things oh, now, yeah. like, oh, yeah. you know, and, uh, so yeah, that would just be, that'd be my call. I want to see that. I want nice. To see that. Nice. That, yeah. and, and I just think there needs to be a, a, a warriors and, uh, just in general, but I want that song. What was that 80 song? Shooting at the walls of heartache. <laughs> oh, the warrior, the warrior, uh, Patty Smith. The, yes, that's oh, it. Oh, wow. yeah. Yep, there but that, that's just got to be in it. Yeah. I am the oh man, warrior. dude. Honestly, I'd want it. I'd want it. I'd want a gritty, like punch you in the face, slow version of Patty nowhere Smith. to run, oh. nowhere to hide. Like nice. you know, just yeah. I mean, just oh, yeah. going through. Hell. But there's, I mean, there's things they'd have to explain, like you know, like. The original movie had like, like virtually like no guns uh. or anything. Like so, how does this? You know, like why? You know, why is this area so, um, uh, you know, uh, void of any form of policing or something? And these gangs kind of run rapid. And you know, are they going to crack down? Yeah. And is that you know, is one of the warriors secretly like a cop? Like do a little uh, bit of a reservoir yeah, dog, where it's like a you know, like lines are drawn kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I like just I, I like feel it. like there's ways they could take it and do it. You know. I'm gonna have a weird, uh, a quick follow up at the end of this, uh, and and you guys are gonna put you on the spot. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna break the rules a little bit here. I'm gonna give you a couple, and then focus on one. Uh, go for Just it. I'm, I'm into that. Just I'm into that. Taste here. All right, so I'll <laughs> go. I'll taste. go. For, I'll go for low hanging fruit first. Uh, Indiana Jones with Chris Pratt. Okay. Yeah. I think I, I think I, everyone agrees yeah. universally that yeah. that should happen when Harrison Ford is ready to actually hang up. You know. Hang weird. himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you have to get the whip from around yeah, him, exactly. you know? <laughs> right, so I want to see that movie. And, of course, that's been talked about. I don't know if it will ever happen, but I think he's probably the perfect person to do it. Yeah. He And they've done some uh, deep fake. Uh, yeah, it, video, it looks great. It, it looks wonderful. Yeah, so I think you sent him to me. So. I want to see that. Uh, there's this old movie that was, uh, I think, done in the 70s. It was um, uh, might have been the 60s, but I think it was the 70s. It's called Dirty Dozen. Mm, nice. Oh yeah, and it's like I, the original Suicide Squad. I, I, wanted yeah. to, I wanted to see a remake. This is a while back when when Samuel L. Jackson was still, I think, a little bit more uh, appropriate for a role like this. But um, he would basically take the role. I think it was Lee Majors, right? I uh, oh, yeah, the colonel, yeah. the colonel, yeah. or the the major rather, who yeah. was leading the Dirty Dozen. Yeah, I'd want Samuel L. Jackson. To lead a ragtag group of prisoners uh, mm. who, you know, broke the uniform code of military justice and are on death row mm-hmm. to go, you know, take on some, um, 
you know, some, some people were at war with, like in the Middle East, for instance. I thought that would be a great remake. Samuel Jackson would be the right guy to, you know, lead that team, and then you can put together an ensemble cast. I don't know who the cast would be. Like a, like a team of, like, even, like Avengers, you would yeah, say. Yeah, but, like, even back then, it was, like, it. I mean, it had everybody in it. It, it was, did. It was, uh, uh, oh, my God. Uh, I don't Bronson. know names. Um, yeah, Charles Bronson. Charles Bronson. Charlie Bronson. Donald I mean, Sutherland. Donald Sutherland. Yeah, Sutherland was yeah, nice, right. yeah. I mean, it was like, yeah, it really was in a way almost like a suicide squad. Like we're training these people; they're going to go on a mission. They probably won't come back. Yep. Kind of thing. Like it. Yeah, it's yeah. A, it holds up actually pretty well. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. It, it's just guys earning redemption too. Right? Yeah, it's, it's such a, oh, it's a good right. movie. Right, and yeah. so little taste, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, I'd like to actually see a, a remake of Dawn of the Dead, but like. No disrespect to Zack Snyder. I think he did a lot of good things. I think he did too. He did a lot of good things in it, but I I always feel like a a zombie film uh, that that really would be great would be during the disaster. You got a lot of this uh, in World War Z, right? Mm. You saw the world fall apart, and I thought that was like one of the best parts about I, World I, War Z. I, I, I want to see how society is going to deal with such a crisis. And have you seen Train to Busan? I have not seen That's it. on my watch list because I just heard about it and I was yeah. like, I need to check it out. I watched it the other day. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, but I'm like a companion to World War Z. Sure, but, yeah, but yeah. I wanna see I wanna see something I think Dawn of the Dead was trying to be that, but then they got they got caught in the mall. And yeah, but I love the mall thing. I didn't I'm not I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying I, I like Dawn yeah, of the Dead. Yeah, this is your remake. No, I, I get but it. But I wanna I see I wanna see what I want to see what happens when regular people are forced to try and get out of a major city and right. see, you know, what the military, the police, what they're doing to help quell the zombie apocalypse. Um, so I'd like to see a remake like that. But the one uh, remake that I would really like to see is Ghostbusters, mm-hmm. and not with no disrespect to any women, but not with not with the female cast um, because uh, that just wasn't good. <laughs> And there were some, uh, like, there were some good things about it, yeah. but I think it, it failed in a lot of ways. And a part of it is because a lot of people compared it to the original one. Yes, and it's hard to compare those because they were uh, apples and oranges, mm-hmm. um, and they're, they're different. There's there are a lot of funny jokes. There are a lot of funny jokes in, in the the female reboot one, uh, where you know I was laughing out loud mm-hmm. that I didn't necessarily laugh out loud in the original one. But if you're if you're comparing the two, the original one, I think nine times out of ten, everyone will say is the better one. And, and 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 look here, guys, because we are going to have a, a full on Ghostbusters episode. Uh, we planned on doing one around the release of Ghostbusters this year. Obviously, that has moved. But this group will be doing a Ghostbusters episode because I don't know any Ghostbusters fan, bigger Ghostbusters fans, and like that don't have like a replica of the Ecto one. You know what I mean? Like we're we're reasonable, but Dave does have several proton bags. <laughs> I do. <laughs> um. <laughs> it, it's don't do that kids that's I, expensive and and just as a taste for that future episode and, and eric and i have talked about this i would love to see them do uh do the mixed you know genders i'd like to see either two men and two women or, or bring in a, a, a girl who's part of, but i don't want any romance i want yeah. i want a a uh like we're friends like there doesn't have to be any sexual tension like i want to see the the version of 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 the eighties Ghostbusters, but like with friends, not a Dana Barrett. So you know. So I thought about this for a long time, and and you know maybe at the time because I really thought about this like ten years ago. Yeah. Um, but since this was a part of the topic that you wanted to talk about, it, it's bringing back all these memories. But the, the cast I had in my mind uh, was Andy Samberg, mm-hmm. Bill Hader, Jason Sudeikis, and I couldn't remember the fourth, so I'm just picking you know someone that I really like. Craig Robinson. Hey, uh, I think uh, if you bring those four guys together, I think their chemistry would work. I think they they would be able to replicate kind of what you found in the original movie. That casting was 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 pretty spot on. I think originally they wanted Eddie Murphy as opposed to Ernie yes. Hudson, mm. but Ernie Hudson still did a good job. Yeah, he's fine. Ernie Hudson's just delivery of that character it just works. Yes. Just like, oh, hey, yeah. I'm here for a check. Yeah, and yeah, I'll, yeah. Help, I'll help you guys save New York right. as long as I get a check. You know, it just, right. it was like, it was the, the work. He was acting man. when he got the script. That's the, how he acted when he got the script. He's just like, oh, I'll do this. Yeah. <laughs> he, he was kind of our proxy. Like, we could be Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah, there because go. the other yeah. three were. Yeah, because wasn't he like a cab driver and, or something? Yeah. Uh, no. I don't think they go into it. Yeah. No, they, oh, he just shows up. He just shows like, up. Yeah. Jordan, they did an excellent video game a few years ago. Yeah, like, but then he's a doctor. Yeah, and they like go out of their way to mention it. He's a doctor now. 
Yeah. He took that, that summer doctor school. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, I like that. I like that. Cool. I think the elements are the same, though, right? They they go and they, they capture ghosts mm-hmm. and they get in trouble with the government because the government always has to be in everyone's business, right? That's the... Uh. That's the thing of it, and and then they have to deal with the fallout of, of that conflict, and, and in the process, have to fight some big bad you know ghosts. Well, one thing that I hope Afterlife goes into, which it feels like in a way they they have to, is after Ghostbusters one and Ghostbusters two, um, there is kind of this unspoken like. Maybe some people believe they actually saved him from a ghost, and maybe it was just a, a weird thing. I mean, there was almost kind of this little bit of denial. Like, I think about the courtroom scene, which is like uh, it goes to one of my favorite scenes of all time. I showed it to my film study students. The are Scolari talking about Brothers. It. Yeah, the Scolari Brothers <laughs> battle. <laughs> it's just so it's so well done. It really highlights the technological advancement and the complexity of a ghost fight between one and two. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the whole idea of like you know we don't want to hear about ghosts and it, like people roll their eyes at it, mm-hmm. and I hope that after like being in the universe of one and two, we'll touch on like how is society different knowing s- there is something out there. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, does it? You know, does everybody? And and I I hope the movie does. I know it's called Afterlife. I hope the movie doesn't try to give too many answers. Right, you know, I right. know that in the comics they've touched on like crossing over Tons, and so, yeah. I just but. I do, I do want to see kind of that idea of almost kind of coming back to the whole zombie thing of like, what does society look like when you see that change? Like, how do people act different? How do people treat people differently? How do, I mean, just any one of those things, I feel like there's a, a rich, a rich way they in, can mind In that. the original movie, like they do touch on that and it's, it, they, they could have done more probably, but they, you know, they go through that whole thing where Dana Barrett does not, she doesn't believe in ghosts, even mm-hmm. though she experiences it, right? Yeah, um, no you don't one... believe in the force, do you? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. And anyway, like so, people are they're, they're skeptical, right? Which is why we have the EPA, you know, come in and, and try to um, oh, God, stop them, right? But uh, it goes through that whole montage where you know the Ghostbusters with Casey Kasem's and talking yeah. about talking about what's going on. They're gaining more and more popularity, more and more believers. They're but I want to see more of the skepticism. Like, mm-hmm. right? What are you talking about? Like, oh. ghosts really exist? This is nuts. Why do I have to pay you five thousand dollars for? <laughs> you, you, you're getting my you're getting my wheels turning. I wrote down several notes that I want to put into our Ghostbusters episode. And guys, maybe we don't wait till Ghostbusters comes out. Maybe we make Ghostbusters of 2020 our episode. You know yeah. what I mean? I've got some ideas, and, and and we'll talk about that later. That's a great idea, and you got me churning. You got me churning. So I'm making that doing. ghost butter. <laughs> oh, I didn't like that at all. I didn't like that at all. Uh, it's called ectoplasm. <laughs> <laughs> um, the question that I have for you that that oh. I that I that I was thinking: What is one movie mm-hmm. that must never be remade in your in your eyes? If you, if you had a perfect world, what is one movie oh, that you man. don't want to see oh. touched at all? Go ahead. If you oh. got it. Blazing Saddles. Oh, you is, couldn't do it now. You couldn't, yeah, yeah, you couldn't do it. Yeah. But what's so great, I, I mean, even for its time, it was irreverent. Mm-hmm. And that was the point. Mm-hmm. But what's great about it is um, it's just, it's this insane world. It's so mm-hmm. Mel Brooks. It's, uh, but I mean, it's just, it's it's got a zenius to it that there's no way you could try to do and not just be like ripping off comedy classic gold. No, yeah. no, I like that. Oh, you, yeah, you, you want to come back? Okay. Come back? Yeah, we'll come back. We'll come back. Taxi driver. Ta- oh, hands down. You can't. Hands down. I mean, even though they did with Joker. Oh yes. yes. But yeah, yeah, I, I, it's sacrilege. But I still, I still like Joker. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. That movie for me is a perfect movie. It's a perfect. It's almost developed the antihero. Yes. You know, as we yes. know it. Um, just the way it's shot, using you know, shooting on location in New York. You know, it, it's just the, it's just too real. Mm-hmm. To to you would never get that realism in any other movie. Yeah. Today and to you try to do, do it, it again. Um, would would be such a because you would you would try to do that oh big you, time you, you would try to you would try to be a, a like a, a pantomime or what am I trying to say you would try to try to echo it sure. you wouldn't do yeah. it right and you, then you know you could never use a fourteen year old actress to to play a prostitute <laughs> there's a um, there's a, a charity um, 
website that Mark Bernard from Fat Man Beyond has put together. He yeah. calls it he calls it the the nerd plague logs or mm-hmm. the plague the plague nerd logs. And it's a thing that you pay whatever you want. Mm-hmm. And there's a bunch of like TV actors, some movie actors who have like signed on for this. And you pay uh, uh, Mark Bernard as a writer by trade. Um, he comes. Uh, you can. He has other actors. Mm-hmm. These actors pick from. Famous monologues. Mm-hmm. So you have like uh, like Jonathan Frakes did one, but he did like a Battlestar monologue. So you have hey. these people who are who are prominent in yeah. the industry, especially in pop culture, sure. and they're doing other other people's, other people's monologues. Oh, that's awesome, and it's so interesting. And 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 uh, Mark Menarden did one, and Kev did one, um, and Mark made a very interesting point. I think, and I think you you'd think find this interesting that. Uh, he was like, you know, I know that acting's hard, and we kind of make fun of actors, like, oh, it's you know. So he's like, I was able to recite this monologue based on having heard it, but the person who did it first, they had to create how it sounds, oh, and I never yeah. thought about that. I never thought about that, and and that kind of goes to to, to your sure, tax yeah, point, absolutely. And I'd love to stay on brand and be like, you know, I never want to see another Avengers movie redone. And if I had to pick one, I'd have to say Captain America: Civil War. Mm. I would never like to see that redone right, because right. I think it's it's so beautifully yeah, sure. done emotionally. But when I'm when I'm when I'm your dad's age, when I'm in yeah. my, my late fifties and sixties, if we start to see reboots of Potter and and, and Avengers, I, I, I want more. I, I I do want more. But the movie I can't stand the yeah, thought of is yeah. Pulp Fiction. Oh, you I, I you just couldn't because I think it, it falls in the same taxi driver you type thing. It falls, it. It, it, you you couldn't do it without just there was Straight just no way ripping it off. There's there's a magic it would be that like that remade. Gus Van Sant and Psycho. Yes, that's how it yeah, would be. where it it's like hand. Yeah, shot for yeah shot. it's shot yeah. for shot, yeah. but it doesn't keep mm-hmm. the the it has the no soul. It has no yeah. soul. Yeah. yeah, it has no yeah. soul. It is it, it is, has been spawned. <laughs> it is it is the karaoke version. Yeah, you know? yeah there it's you karaoke. Go. Okay, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna break the rules again. Go go for it, man. Right. Yeah, the the rules are I'll, 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 I'll give you I'll give you my answer, but before that, I'll grab. <laughs> but, but in the form of a riddle. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll a grab man had three bit. sons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. So, and it's it's tough because it doesn't quite fit your criteria. But what? Um, and I'm not I'm not gonna bash on because I did enjoy it to a certain extent, but they probably shouldn't have done it because. It just doesn't work if you understand the context. But when they redid, when J.J. Abrams redid the Star Trek mm-hmm. stuff, okay, the reason why you didn't see the kind of success that I, I think was attributed to some of the other films and and um, definitely the series is because the because you didn't have what the series brought to the films, right? Mm-hmm. The reason people wanted to see the movie because the movies was because they were invested in the series. Yes. And you saw all those characters work together and and go on adventures together and they built up a chemistry that you can't replicate just by by bringing new characters together like Chris Pine and yeah. and, and um I can't even remember their name. Yeah, Carl, Carl Urban, yeah. Carl Urban, Zachary Quinto, right? They're, Zoe Saldana, Zoe Saldana. Yeah. right? They're, I mean, they're fine actors and actresses, mm-hmm. but you know, they didn't have what what those original guys had. But I tell you what, if I could see a show with those guys weekly, I would be totally in because I I'm on the other end of, of what you're saying. I love, I, I can I can accept the 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 uh, alternate universe uh, a little bit more. Because of X Men, there's so many mm-hmm. alternate timelines. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love, with the exception of the third movie, I like those. First well, two. so I mean, so the for any of the Trekkies that might be listening to the podcast here, <laughs> I think the that you can, they'll understand what I mean when when you talk about the original Wrath of Khan, I, right? I get what you mean when I do. when Spock sac- spoiler uh, Spock <laughs> <laughs> sacrifices his life, Spock sacrifices <laughs> for the Enterprise, right? And then and Kirk and Spock have that moment. I mean that's that's several years of of them building up something mm-hmm. and it's emotional, right? Yeah. And then when you try to reverse it on its head with Into Darkness, where Kirk is sacrificing his life, you know, for the Enterprise, and and then you see that Spock, you know, having to deal with it, it just isn't. It's not the same. One because they didn't work together for as long as they did. Number one. Number two, because it. It just wasn't. It's a second movie investment versus a twenty year investment. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. yeah that's yeah. a good way to put it. Yeah. Right? So that's my that's yeah, you're right. That's my gripe about the Star Wars. I still go watch them. They're worth a watch. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was. I'll say one good thing about Into Darkness when Spock, you know, is fighting Khan. Right, oh, so cool. and and Khan is like trying to break out uh-huh. of the yeah. um, of the the Death Grip, right? Yeah. And then if you watch Star Trek, you can't do that, right? Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool to see sort of a um, uh, a stronger 
meta humanoid versus a superior Khan Superman. Type. When I was a kid and I saw Wrath of Khan, I was like, man, I really wish I really wish uh, Leonard Nimoy was younger because I'd love to see a Khan and Spock fight. Yeah. Um, and, and to your point about you know them them kind of growing that relationship in, in the show, like I, one of the things, and and I and I think I I, I enjoyed it more. I watched the original Star Trek young with my grandfather and when I watched it as an adult especially when they were redoing the series um I I miss kind of those jabs you know that that Kirk used to take at Spock like trying to like test his, his human you know like but like oh I'm just I'm just trying to figure it out I'm trying to figure out what you know what, what you're taught you know I, I just like those 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 little sarcastic things that he and, and the hard thing about it is is right you when you think of Kirk you know you're thinking of William Shatner, yeah. not Chris Pine. The Shatman. The Shatman, yeah. right? When you're thinking of Spock, you're thinking of Leonard Nimoy. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the hard part, too, is when you try to recast these guys and you have someone who's done it for so long so well, it's hard to do it. It's the same problem with Nightmare on Elm Street, right? Mm-hmm. When they tried to... No disrespect, because I like I like what they... Yeah. What, that yeah. was probably one of the better people... Horror that, remakes. Right, but still, it's it's going to be hard to go up against a legend like Robert, you know, England, yeah. England, right? So that's the other problem with it. But getting on to my my real answer, um, I, I'd have to go with like seven. So oh yeah, dude. So yeah, wow. that was yeah. probably yeah. good choice. The best you could ever do with that story. I'm impressed with the amount of stuff you put together in the three of us going through and all four or five of those things are I'm like yeah man that, I, yeah. I, I disagree with you on the Star Trek because I really enjoyed those first two um, sorry but those but points are so valid the points are completely valid like I, I totally and then that was like, the, I the reason I didn't like the Star Trek movies mm-hmm. as much because yeah the, the, there's no chemistry there. yeah. you're okay. basically trying to harken back to the chemistry on the TV show yeah. and trying to force it into the, those characters yeah you're to trying to like, clone nostalgia yeah uh, they, yeah yeah and man. but the Sound seven bites. I mean I feel like it, they have tried to remake that movie so many times Times as different movies and they all sucked. Yeah, you know, um, Bone Collector. That that's a seven rip off. Is that the one with um, Denzel Washington? Denzel, yeah, I mean, it's like got Bone some Collector. good scenes in yeah. it, but it's when you have a fight man. scene with a guy who can't walk and he like <laughs> that was of, that was like the best part. Dude, of the movie. I, I've never laughed so hard at like at like uh, yeah, uh, it was meant to be serious. No, man, a, that no, was it's that funny. was quite funny. <laughs> well, kids, that's our show for today. If you like what we're doing, please hit that subscribe button. Um, it really helps us out. We uh, you know, we're trying to we've got our, our comic book giveaway. Check out our previous videos where we talk about it. We're giving away a bunch of graded books. One of them is Ultimate Fallout 4. We're trying to get to that uh, 1,000 subscriber mark. So please tell your friends. Share the show. Leave some comments. If you if you don't like what we're doing, we'll, we'll try to make it work for you. But, I mean, I'm, I'm talking to my friends and I like that. So, whatever. Um, Eric, do you have any final thoughts for us? Yeah, I, I you know, I real quick, uh, I really want a, if I could go to an alternate timeline, I want bringing down the house made by John Singleton. That's what I want. Mm, mm-hmm. That's the biggie, man. Okay, okay. No, no, no kid and play um, um, oh, redos. No. Okay, untouchable. No, 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 no. no, those are untouchable. Untouchable. <laughs> untouchable. House party. Uh, house party. House party one, like house party two. Those are All right. two people. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, Big Tuna, thank you so much for joining us. Same with you, Dave. We've got to figure out a good nickname for you. D-Dubs. D- D-Dubs. D-Dubs. Yeah, D-Dubs. There we go. Uh, I've been your host, Roman Chavez. I'm still Eric Icarus. Thank you for watching, and we will catch you on the next podcast.